Hello again. This is going to be a teardown of the Magic Shine bicycle headlight, the MJ880U. Uh, the dual headlights together have a claimed output of 2200 lumens with a battery pack claimed at 6600 milliamp hours. We're going to tear down the bicycle battery pack, the headlamp, and the AC charger. So here we have the battery pack. They sealed it chemically or ultrasonically around each end. So um, break it apart, I had to pry it in here with some spongers. And uh, eventually I worked it around and you can see where they had it. So the battery pack just pulled out of there. There we go. So we can go ahead and cut that up. Here we go. So I've now just cut that be able to pull off. So here we have the six lithium ion cells. Batteries are just connected with regular tab welds. So the charging, charging circuits on the bottom here. There we go. So here's a closer look at the printed circuit board. You, know, you got your battery management, you, you got your other wires over here, you got your, your input from the, the battery charger. Uh, you got a date code on that at the end of 2011. Hopefully that's just on the PCB. The batteries weren't sitting around that long. Um, you got the three ICs, the three large ones over there. Um, the one labeled U3 is missing. These two chips are identical and the data sheet says they're IC protection and primer chips. A uh, quick look up on these batteries uh, shows them as a brand called BAK, B-A-K, um, you know, 18650 batteries, uh, 2250 milliamp hours. In order to hit the rating of the pack, they're running these cells in sets of three with e in each set there's two battery, two cells in series, and then they have three sets in parallel, and that's giving you your 7.4 volts at 6,600 milliamp hours capacity. Now I can order these batteries just by themselves from in, from the multiple suppliers in China, and at about 200 in quantity, they'll cost a dollar forty a battery. So to me, that doesn't scream seriously high quality battery. So both the batteries and the ICs showed up as Chinese manufactured materials and they're not really name brand associated with, with super high quality. Actually, to bust this pack open after I had I pried in there and, and got it going, it, you know, it was sealed like that. Actually, I used my, part of my paint device accessories and I, uh, you know, it was for printed circuit board, holding printed circuit boards and I put it in there and, you know, cranked it out in reverse and was able to leverage that off. How they sealed this to me was probably with uh, a chemical ABS plastic weld, which is what I'm going to use to try to reseal it from weld on. Uh, so we'll draw this, some, up, this, some of this up in the syringe and see what we can do. So here we have the systems charger. Uh, got the barrel jack that mates with the, the female receptacle that is presumably watertight. Uh, got a mains adapter there. It's listed as outputting uh, 2.5 amps at 
8.4 volts DC. So unfortunately, I did quite literally have to go around and crack this thing open. I made sure to flip the board over and uh, discharge any of those high voltage caps there. You know, so we got the input. It looks like we got a, a mauve right there but before a choke to filter out some stuff right there off the, the AC. You got a reservoir stiffening cap before it heads into the transformer. It's got a little MOSFET there. Comes down to a voltage regulator and you got a dual op amp over here that's doing some comparison work to, to switch, at least switch the LED, maybe to switch some current to the system onto the batteries. Uh, either side of the board, nothing's really going on. And we got a Yalecon capacitor here. Um, I've never heard of them, didn't really even come up on Google there. I just, uh, so maybe the quality's there, but the name sure isn't. So here it is before we take it apart. Got a screw on the bottom, probably just holding on that rubber piece there so it mates nicely with the handlebars. Everything's going to come out with those two Allen head screws there in the front that are bolted into the piece of extruded aluminum. Everything else is going to be fit through from the inside, so that's how we need to get into it. Got the headlight, so this front comes off before anything else, and the optics have some opaque shields over them, one for each LED, and then the front piece of aluminum here has two custom, what's well, probably acrylic. It's got a rubber seal to help keep that weather tight. Now, this PCB there, I've already pulled back. So that sits in the back of this this gray piece of metal here, in contrast to this black one. The PCB sits against that with two more screws on either side, with a copper black back plane for uh, you know thermal transfer. There's thermal paste there. Um, pretty sparse LED board. Uh, I mean, you got a resistor there, and then you have the two Cree XML LEDs. This metal sleeve here pulls out. Beyond that you got another another PCB. It's then connected to this power wire. Probably got a micro chip there. A microprocessor I mean to do all the stuff. You got a voltage regulator on board. You got two nice uh, push buttons. Uh, obviously LEDs down there. On the underside of that board, you got uh, some inductors and diodes and whatnot for your for your LEDs. They probably run pretty much straight off the uh, battery packs. There's no, I don't see anything manipulating the voltage for these things. Again, not bad construction. Uh, it did seem to be pretty tight. Uh, for, for weather sealing purposes. Um, if the air is not moving over this and you have this on uh, you know, almost full or full bright, it does get hot to the touch. Here's a bit closer shot on all these boards and the parts. That microcontroller does not have anything printed on it at all.
So that is a Magic Shine Bicycle Light Teardown. I did manage to get everything back together and sealed back up, but it's not something I recommend tearing down just for kicks. With the battery pack being sealed the way it is, the batteries are in no way really replaceable. The battery should have been a better quality, the chips, the capacitors, all that kind of stuff. Could have been a better name brand, but for quality and reliability of the actual parts, I don't think they're going to be too much of a problem because I'm sure they, they went through and product tested them. The build quality is pretty nice for the overall package price of about $200 US, uh, which isn't too bad because they're not giving away for free. they got to make some money on it. If you want to see if this Magic Shine light meets the specifications listed in the manual, the video for that is going to be down here in the left-hand part of the screen. My overall review of this light is going to be down here in the right part of the screen. I'll catch you guys later.